many blessings. Welcome to this week's Faith Builder podcast coming to you from Power Church. We're looking forward to the next few minutes together as we share the Word of God and we discuss an all-important topic that I know is going to help you today in your walk of faith. So good to be with you. Amen. Hi, everyone. Blessings to you all. We're praying that your day is being blessed as you take a bit of time to listen to our Bible study today. And I really hope that the, what we've been talking about the last couple of weeks yeah. now um, has been very helpful to you and you've been having the opportunity to put it into practices in your daily life. Yeah, I'm really enjoying these last few podcasts. Mm-hmm. We've been talking about the attitude of gratitude that we ought to have as, as believers and I'm telling you, that if, if there's any person on this earth that should be grateful, yes. it's the Christian. Yes. It's the faith man, the faith woman of God. It's, it just does not go together saying, I have faith mm. and walking around all grumpy and upset yeah. and ungrateful. Gratitude is the aroma of faith. Amen. So if we're going to be successful faith people, which that's what we want to be, yeah. we are going to have to master an attitude of gratitude. Amen. We're going to have to be grateful. We're going to have to learn to appreciate what God gives to us, what mm-hmm. God has put in our hands. We have to learn to say thank you. Yes. Thank you for the little things. Thank you, God, for the big things. Mm-hmm. It's creating a vocabulary of gratitude. Mm-hmm. I know that, you know, I, I include in my vocabulary, even for simple things, someone serves you. I like to say more than yeah. just thank you. Mm-hmm. I like to say I appreciate it. Yeah. I appreciate it. It just goes a little bit further yeah. than just thank you. Mm-hmm. I appreciate that. Thank you very much. And you know, when you when you have that kind of a vocabulary, you mm. you catch yourself when you're being ungrateful. Yeah. And the other thing is that um, if we're not if we don't learn to be grateful for the little things or the things we perceive as little, yeah. uh, because the fact is that. Everything we have is a blessing from the Lord. That's like true. we said a couple of weeks ago, you know, just the fact that the toilet flashes, it's a huge reason to well, say thank you to that would God. Be a, that would be a big blessing yes. in, in countries that don't even exactly. have uh, running water. So I think if we don't learn to appreciate the little things, then we're going to find it difficult to appreciate the big yeah. things. And God's our heavenly Father. Amen. And He views us as, you know, we view our children. We want to have grateful children, mm-hmm. we want to have children that appreciate what is given to them. The moment they start being yeah. ungrateful and complaining and, and you know, grumbling mm-hmm. and it, it causes you to yeah. say, that's, that's not right. Mm-hmm. That's not right. So that's the same thing with God. So he wants grateful children. Yes, amen. Grateful children. So we've been looking at that and, and last week we looked at what, what causes us to be ungrateful. Mm. And so we spoke about, you know, when we, when we stop intentionally saying thank you, so we have to master and cultivate an yeah. intentional thank you. Thank you for this day. Thank you for this meal. I appreciate, Lord God, what you, the job you've given mm-hmm. to me, this, you know, this clothes that I can put on my body. It just intentionally saying thank yeah. you. Someone gives you something, thank you. I appreciate that. Mm-hmm. Thank you for your service. So we have to be intentional. When we stop being intentional with our thank you, with our appreciation, it's very easy to fall into the complaining Mm -hmm. side. We start to complain about what we don't have. Mm -hmm. And so intentionally say thank you. Then we we looked at, you know, we're going to be ungrateful when we live in the past. Regret. When we look at the past and I remember Mm -hmm. I I was better off or if I didn't do that, if I didn't Mm -hmm. make that decision, if I didn't marry that person, if I didn't take that job. And always look into the past, we're going to become ungrateful with yeah. our present and we're not going to look with optimism to the future. Yeah. And so today we want to look at another two, which is, and we're, and we're taking these thoughts out of Numbers chapter 11, verse 1 to verse 6, when the people of Israel began to complain yeah. about the manna that God gave to them. So, you know, they, they stopped saying thank you, so they complained about the manna. They were saying, we remember in Egypt. Mm-hmm. In Egypt we had this and we had that. They're living in the past. And today we want to look at number three. Uh, we become ungrateful when we start comparing ourselves with others. Now in verse five, mm-hmm. the, the people of Israel said, we remember the fish. 
which we did eat in Egypt Mm -hmm. freely, the cucumbers, and they go on. So they're talking about Egypt. Egypt had this. Yeah. Egypt provided this for me. So they they began to compare their situation with Egypt. Yeah. And therefore, they became Uh ungrateful. So comparing is not, not good. Comparing ourselves and always looking to what others have and, and to others' gifts and talents and, and, and looking to what we have and, and always wanting what other mm-hmm. people have, you know what it will do? It will forever cause us to be ungrateful. I don't have that. I wish I had it. Yeah. And we can't appreciate what we actually mm-hmm. do have. And understanding that what we have is a blessing. Yeah, and the other thing is when you are always looking at someone else's, you know, achievements and what they've, what they've got in their hand, you stop working on you. Yeah. You stop working. That, what we need to understand is that nobody just, nobody's just born the way they are. You know, people, some people have great achievements and they are to be admired, but it's work. You know, it is the result of a lot of years of work. And sometimes we think, oh, why can't I have that? Well, you haven't gone through their journey yet. So I think it it, it stops us from developing ourselves Mm. when we are always look looking at someone else's achievements as in, uh, you know, desiring their Mm. achievements. It's good to look at people for inspiration maybe that's okay but that should be an inspiration to work hard as well to to continue our own journey and achieving our own goals and the other thing is um like when we when we are desiring what someone else has we we don't appreciate what we have right now and and so it just affects us in a negative way well and and then it's it's a domino's effect because when we are focusing on what others have and continually comparing ourselves Mm -hmm. with them and then all we're doing is complaining about what we have yeah and i wish we had that i wish i had that i wish i lived there and, and on and on what what happens is then we open ourselves up to envy, yes. to jealousy, yep. to strife, someone else's thing. A, a, a competitive spirit. Mm-hmm. We start competing. And let me tell you something mm-hmm. which is true. Yeah. There will always be someone off that was better off than us. Yeah. There will always be someone that's more gifted than yeah. us, uh, more talented than us, has more money than us, has yeah. a bigger house than us, has a faster car. And if, if, we are, if we're going to live like that, my, are we going like to live forever. a frustrated yeah. life? Yeah. We are going to live a frustrated life, always complaining, always saying, yeah, I've got this, but I wish I had that. Mm-hmm. Just never satisfied, yeah. never content with what God has put yeah. in our hands now. And, and, and it'll, it'll birth yeah. envy, it'll birth jealousy, and then we want those things – not for the right or with motivation, the right motives, yeah. the motivation behind it, trying to keep up with the Joneses, like they say. Mm-hmm. And really <clears throat> being ungrateful for what mm-hmm. is a oh, blessing. Yeah. yeah, Being ungrateful for who God has made us to be. Mm-hmm. And we, we lose that, the power of contentment, content. Now, contentment doesn't mean we, we don't aspire for more. Exactly. We need to aspire for more. As, as people of God, we should always challenge ourselves. We should always mm-hmm. want to go higher. And, and we should always aspire to, to yeah. achieve more. There's nothing wrong with that. But, uh, but being content with where we are. Yeah. Because if you think that that next car or the next house mm. is going to satisfy yeah. your, your need, you're going, you're going to uh, find yourself with a big surprise. Yeah. Because... There comes a time where you think about a billionaire or millionaire, you can mm-hmm. only buy so many houses. I mean, yeah. you only live in one house. Yeah, exactly. You can only buy so many, you know, holiday apartments mm. until when, when does it satisfy you? If, if, if you're looking for that to satisfy you and to cause you to be, now I'm grateful, mm-hmm. now I'm thankful, I have everything yeah. I need. Well, you're going to arrive at that place and still find out I'm not content. Yeah, and you'll be surprised how many families – 
are in that state at the moment, yeah. especially with the influence of social media, where you can compare with the rest of the world, mm. which is, is in your hand for you to view. <laughs> yeah. um, and so a lot of people live based on what they see on social media. It might be conscious or unconscious, but it's in the back of mm. their minds because you have to follow the trend on everything, on yeah. the shoes, on the house, on everything that peop other people are doing, that that's your driving life. And, yeah. and then, you know, we don't realize how we've crossed that line of uh, envy mm. and you're doing things out of envy. Yeah. Um, and so now you're in the flesh. Now it's not the Holy Spirit directing us. Now it's not the motive to please God in our mm. life, but it's to follow the next trend. And sometimes people, because social media is so prevalent at the moment, people don't even realize mm. they're there. But it's, it is a lifestyle that's creeping in and a lot of families are suffering, a yeah. lot of marriages are suffering because their wives are comparing their husbands to every other husband on social media. And everything is compar yeah. comparison, comparison. A lot of children are suffering from this as well, where they go to school and they're comparing houses and comparing. I, I heard a, a mom not long ago saying how their kids were on Google comparing the houses and who had the bigger house, who had the better house. And the children were starting to feel embarrassed as to where they lived. And so this, this is a serious uh, problem mm. for the believer because um, we have to be grateful. And that's one thing we as parents have to teach our kids. We have to be grateful with what God has given us. Yeah. If we... Um, if we say to our children, God has given this to us, then we learn to be satisfied. Yeah. And, we are, and, and again, being grateful. It might not be, you the know, flashiest. the house we want to <laughs> live in, but we're grateful for the house yeah. we live in. We, we might, you just got to be grateful. It might not be the job that I mm -hmm. wish I had, but I'm going to be grateful for this job. And then that's how then God opens doors for us. Because yeah. I don't know if we'll get there today, but if gratitude will open us up. To greater things. Yeah. And so we need to be grateful for what we have. Don't compare yourself with others. Mm -hmm. Don't compete with no one else. You, you don't try to impress people. Just be about doing God's business. Mm -hmm. You know, Galatians chapter 1, verse 10. I love the apostle Paul. He's, he he knows who he is, he yeah. knows the gift that he has. He's not trying to impress anybody, he's not trying to prove himself. He doesn't want everyone to, to, to celebrate him. He just yeah. says, look, for, in Galatians 1.10, for am I now seeking the approval of man mm -hmm. or of God? Am I trying to please men? It's a question. The answer obviously is no. Mm. If I was still trying to please men, I would not be a servant of Christ. Mm. You know, he says, I've got rid of the temptation and the, and the, and the, the desire to mm -hmm. prove myself. Mm -hmm. He's saying... I'm content. And he's the one that wrote, yeah. godliness with contentment is great gain. That's right. He says, I know what it is to have and to have not. I know what mm -hmm. it is to, to have food and have no food. I know what it is to have clothes and mm -hmm. be naked. I know what it is to be, I've learned to be content. Yeah. You have to learn to be content. Mm -hmm. Because we all have that little thing inside mm -hmm. of us. We want more. We want more. Yeah. And there's nothing wrong with, with wanting more and like I said Better. before, but yeah. why? Mm-hmm. The, the question is, why do mm -hmm. I want more? Is it because somebody else just That's bought right. something? Mm -hmm. Do I want a, a new set of shoes because somebody else just bought a new pair of shoes? Mm -hmm. It's the why. Yeah. And, and so we need to just, we're here to, to be approved by God. Amen. And you don't want to be chasing things. Yes. Things should chase you. Yeah. The Bible says God shall give us the desires of our heart. Mm -hmm. We don't chase the desires of our heart. There are people that get themselves into mm -hmm. a mess. Yeah. Debts, getting loans, mm -hmm. getting into mortgages, just just acquiring mm -hmm. debt just to buy something. Yeah. So they can pretend. Mm -hmm. That's ridiculous. Yeah. That's yeah. crazy. That's chasing mm -hmm. your desires. That's mm -hmm. chasing material things. You live for God. Yeah. You God honor God. You be content. You be grateful, and things will come to you. Yeah. They will come to you because you are walking with the right heart before yeah. God. You're walking with gratitude. You're applying his principles and, and things will come to you. Yeah. But we have a generation of people that want it now. And they're willing to do whatever they've got to do mm -hmm. to get it now to impress someone. 
to show someone, to show it off. And, and like I said before, that is frustrating because you will never yep. be content because mm-hmm. there will always be someone better, better off, off than you. smarter, mm-hmm. more talented in the ministry, more anointed. Mm-hmm. And when do you, when do you finish? Mm-hmm. When do you arrive? Let, let God satisfy you. Let God fill you up. Be grateful Amen. for the day that the Lord has made. Be grateful for the house you live in now, the mm-hmm. car you drive, the clothes you're on your body. You might say, but I want that. Amen. Mm-hmm. Pray to God about yeah. it. But not because I want to prove myself or I want to uh, flash it and mm-hmm. I want to impress people. The or apost- everyone else has it. Why can't I? Yeah, the Apostle Paul no. said, I'm not trying to prove myself yeah. to men. And, and, and you know why? God's not impressed. Mm-hmm. He's not impressed That's by the right. house we live in or the car we drive or our he's not even impressed by our, our anointing. Yeah. Oh it's my from ministry, <laughs> my church. And we think that wow. Mm-hmm. Look at me and God's going. That doesn't impress mm-hmm. me. What impresses God is a grateful heart. Amen. And a heart of honor. What impresses God is is gratitude. You know, I, I, I grew up with a, there was a young man that we grew up with, that mm. sort of in our, in our circle of friends. And it was funny because I remember that if, if anyone would buy a pair of shoes, <laughs> he would have to go and buy a pair of shoes. Yeah. Or he would say something like, you know, they, they're cheap, or, or you know, I, I can buy shoes mm. more expensive than that. If someone w- was bought a car, you know, he would say, oh, you know, my, my, my dad, mm-hmm. my dad and mum are, are going to be buying a car very soon and, and it's going to be so much more better than, better than It's going to be better <laughs> than yours. It's, it's an expensive car. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It, always comparing and you would see it. Someone would buy clothes and he would come the next week with a, mm-hmm. with a, with a, a clothes that was noticeable mm-hmm. and just always, always yeah. comparing. Not a good trait. Always saying, oh, that's, that's ugly or that's not even, that's cheap. And always had more, always more. And mm. the dad and mum accommodated that. Yeah, exactly. That's the what dad I'm and mum didn't traits. train this young man how to be grateful and how to stop that mm-hmm. that compare, which is really it's envy, it's jealousy. Yeah. And um, and so then the older they get, well, they they live like that. Mm-hmm. They want to impress. It's harder to keep up with it as well. And it's harder to keep up with it. And mm-hmm. and so then. This young man got involved into into drugs mm-hmm. and and selling and and um, because there was money in it, so it looked flashy and mm-hmm. looked the part. But eventually got into trouble with the law. But always had this this part of him that just always comparing, mm-hmm. always competing, always wanting to have more, mm-hmm. always you know mine my things, and. And that's a problem. It is. That's a problem because it cultivates an attitude of, of wanting to impress, wanting to cel- be celebrated, mm-hmm. wanting to be the center of attention. And when we have that in us, it's a bad trait. Mm-hmm. It, it will not end well. Yeah, exactly. It will not end well because... Yeah. You know, you probably start doing some silly things, exactly. things that you shouldn't be doing. And it's a trait that you learn very early in yeah. life. Um, and the parents have to teach have to, yeah. the children to be grateful. Mm-hmm. You be grateful for what you have. Oh, we, we, we need to go to Disneyland because, you know, so-and-so went to Disneyland. Well, we can't at the moment. We're going to Dreamworld. You know, and, and so <laughs> if you start teaching, oh, I want a pair of Nikes because mm-hmm. somebody else had a pair of Nikes. No, no, we don't get a pair of Nikes because somebody else got mm-hmm. a pair of Nikes. We'll get you a pair of Nikes when, you know, when we can buy it for you. And, mm-hmm. and when we do buy it for you, you'd be grateful. If yeah. I get you a pair of, of um, Reeboks mm-hmm. or Dunlops. Everyone, anyone remember the Dunlops? <laughs> <laughs> pair of Dunlops. Here you go. Be grateful. How about I, I just get shoes? I remember Don't once. Don't worry about the label. Once we bought a, we bought a, my, well, my dad and mum, I was at home, I was probably a teenager. My dad and mum bought a gift for someone. It was a birthday for a, for a, a young boy. It would, mm-hmm. it would have been five years younger than us, maybe more. And the, and the little kid started crying and, and, and kicking because he didn't like the present. It, oh wasn't, it wasn't a present that he liked. 
Oh my goodness. It wasn't what he wanted. Oh, wow. <gasps> I could see my dad shaking. My dad was shaking. <laughs> That's okay. I'll take the present back. <laughs> my dad would, wanted to teach him a good lesson. Yeah. But what a terrible thing. And, and his dad and mum there embarrassed. And what, what terrible mm. uh, teaching. But see, kids are going to do stuff that you allow them to do. Yeah. Whatever you allow them to do in pu- in private, they're going to do it in public yeah. and embarrass you in public because so you haven't taught them right. That's a teaching. You teach them. You teach them. And, and obviously we live in – we're blessed in this nation of Australia. And yeah. We're, we're, we have abundance. We, we have so much. And really anyone here in this mm-hmm. country is – is a rich person in any other in, yeah. in a third world country. Comparison, yeah, but for we don't, sure. we don't, uh, we have to learn to appreciate that. Thank you, God. Thank mm-hmm. you, Lord. So grateful, God. And if you do that, you'll be so much more happier. Exactly. I'm exactly. not competing with anyone. Mm-hmm. I'm just trying to please God. And my God's yeah. God's bar is really high. He's exactly. not going. He's not going. Oh wow, Stephen, <laughs> my whoa. <laughs> What you are you know, powerful. What a shirt. Oh wow, what a what an anointing on your life today. He, he, oh, I even felt it. And sometimes we think like, you know, yeah. we, we Yeah. And we think know, more of ourselves than we ought to. And then we, we start copying other people and and it's en- it's just endless. Yeah. That'll cause us to be ungrateful. Mm-hmm. Ungrateful. Things don't validate us mm. before God. Amen. Think about that. Things don't validate us before God. Yeah. And things are just there to be a blessing to our life. Like I said before, he'll give us the desires mm-hmm. of our hearts. God's a good God. And the fact is that there will be uh, times in our lives that we have to go through, in our eyes, need. Mm. Because then we learn to depend on God. See, see that's the thing with the Western church, mm. that we do not um, appreciate the value of going through need yeah. because we don't have any need. Yeah. And therefore, we think, um, you know, having need is something bad, but it's actually a great opportunity for God to move and show his mercy and show his miracles to yeah. us. How are you going to know that God is all-powerful and he can answer prayers if you're not going through any need? Yeah. If you've never been sick and God healed you, how do you know God is a healer? Yeah. So. Need is actually an opportunity for God's miracles to yeah. happen in our lives, uh, even though we might have to yeah. go through them. And sometimes. The, other, the other thing is that the same way that there's always someone that's better off than us, mm-hmm. there's always someone that's worse off than yeah. us. Mm-hmm. Think about that. There's always someone that's worse off. Yeah. There's always someone that has less. There's always someone mm-hmm. that's not as healthy. There's always someone that's struggling yeah. more than us. So it's just learning. This is where I am right now. Yeah. This is what God's given to me. Mm-hmm. I'm going to be grateful. Yeah. And I and, and I tell you that attitude will will begin to create yeah. an environment, and you will and doors will yeah. begin to open because you become you become a, a, a an attraction. Mm-hmm. Things attract to you. Yeah. Th- things attract yeah. to a positive vibe and a faith filled living because your words then yeah. line up. Your thinking begins to line up. You begin to surround yourself with the right people and, and doors begin to mm-hmm. open. So this is a very, very, very important yeah. topic when it comes to our faith life. One that many mm-hmm. uh, underestimate. Yeah. Gratitude. Yeah. Gratitude. Avoid the temptation. And I think we shared this a few weeks ago to, to prove yourself. You don't need to prove yourself to nobody. Yeah. You know, with, as I said a few weeks ago, with social media, yeah. the temptation is to want to prove ourselves. Mm-hmm. Look what I've got. Look mm-hmm. what I bought. Mm-hmm. And we do. It's very subtle, yeah. and we want the likes, and we want the comments, and we want the celebration. And, and if it's there, you mm-hmm. want the oh it's wow. It's a fine line, isn't it? Yeah. And you're looking for it, and and if if you live like that, beloved. Brother and sister, friend, if you live like that, you will always be frustrated mm. and you will be ungrateful, really. Yeah, and ungrateful. the thing is, like, we can see the results now after so many years of social media of how many people have been negatively affected by it. I mean, you have all these influencers doing crazy things yeah. just to have followers that some of them have passed away. I was looking at a story of this 
lady who, you know, she, she had a huge following on social media, but then her followers started criticizing her body and saying, oh, you have a pretty face, but if you lost some more weight, you will look better and you will get more likes and you get more followers. Yeah. So she goes to have a surgery and she died on the table. Wow. Unnecessarily. She didn't need to put herself through that. And her mother is now in tears saying, why would anybody tell her she didn't look good enough? Yeah. But because of this obsession that people have to have these followers and, you know, it, it just affects people's state of mind. Mm. And I think when you're grateful, you still look to do better, but when you're grateful to God with, for what you have, you just allow the Holy Spirit to truly guide your life and, and, and you're not going to make abrupt decisions yeah, then, as a reaction to other people. The other thing, there's the timings of God, there are yeah. the seasons of God, there, you know, there's the process yeah. of God. God says, not now, yeah. I'm working on something, I'm working on you. And so we, mm-hmm. you learn all that on the journey. There's the timings yeah. of God, there are the seasons of God, there is the sowing and the reaping. Mm-hmm. You know, you might not have it now, but yep. you'll get it later. Yeah. Well, I was thinking just now that there was a time in our life that we, we had to be very um, strict with our spending mm. because of the time that we were going through, with because of, because of the season we were going through. And I remember once going shopping and we had to be really like, okay, you know, this is what we have to spend, so we can't just fill up the... the the trolley with everything, with whatever, but the necessary. And I'm, I would feel terrible inside because you got young kids that are asking for this and are asking for that, and you had to be very selective in what you put in your shopping trolley. But, you know, I would say, Lord, you know, I hope that one day we're able to just not even worry about it and be able to just get what we want at the shops. And you know what? That attitude and saying thank you to the Lord for what we had, that we were able to go shopping, even though it might have been limited, but we were able to go shopping, Um, it went a long way. And God multiplied what we had. We've never gone without. But he also did something. A sister from the church will bring us out of the blue. She started bringing us once a week a box with all the little things that we couldn't put in our shopping trolley, which she didn't know what they were, but I did. And so all the things, and she said, this is for the kids. It's for the children. And it's exactly the things that we were trying not to get (laughs) uh, because they weren't necessary. And so they never experienced Oh, I didn't get my Tim Tams. You know, they had them because God provided a miracle through somebody else. And so that's what I was saying before, that sometimes we see need as an opportunity to complain when in fact there's an opportunity for God to do a miracle in your life. And we saw that and God blessed us through that and blessed us through this sister and, and we saw God moving on our behalf. And so sometimes we got to be, God tests our attitude to see, are you going to allow me to show, show myself to you through this need? Mm, so let's amen. just be grateful. Yeah, we got to learn, be grateful, no need to compare mm-hmm. yourself, no need to try to prove yourself, be content with what God has you now. At the same time, aspire for more, yeah. dream, plan, and and do what you've got to do, mm-hmm. but wherever you find yourself now, be grateful, yeah. be thankful, and you watch what God does in your life. Next week, Amen. we're going to continue with another point, and I think it's going to bless you. We're going to look at familiarity. One of the things that causes us to be ungrateful is being familiar with the blessings of God that He gives to us. So God bless you. Amen. Thank you for joining us today. Have a great day. Be grateful. Walk. Say thank you, God. Be, be on this journey of faith with victory, walk with victory today. God bless you.